that sequence was a combination of my own footage and stock footage from Artgrid, which is the sponsor of today's video. And today I just wanna walk you through how I put together that sequence using stock footage from Artgrid and some tricks that I use to hopefully more or less seamlessly blend it into my own footage. And if you wanna know a little more about that intro sequence, I just posted a little breakdown of it on my IGTV, so you can go check that out. I'll link it in the description. So my starting point for this sequence was footage from two different locations, this waterfall and then this kind of like foggy, rainy mountain road. And it's not bad footage, I actually quite like it, but it's not nearly enough to make an entire video out of. So that's where the stock footage comes into play and I had to use a lot of stock footage to finish this one off. But what's great about Artgrid is that they have one license that gives you access to their entire library of footage. So I was able to pull an unlimited amount of stock footage to put into this project. You're not paying like for an individual clip or paying for like, you know, maybe 10 or 20 clips per month. One license, unlimited access to everything. Now there are three different tiers of that license depending on the quality of footage that you want to download. It starts out at just $25 a month where you get access to that full catalog of HD footage. Then if you pay a little more, you can get it in 4K or like a higher quality codec and then pay a little more than that and you have access to actually the log versions of that footage and even raw in a lot of cases, which is pretty wild. The license also doesn't ever expire. So if you don't resubscribe in the future, you're not gonna lose your right to use those clips in your projects, which is great. And that single license covers you, it covers your business, and it covers even your client's use of the footage. So it's pretty airtight in terms of who can redistribute what you made using stock footage. That being said, let's start out by talking a bit about when you might need to use stock footage, some of the different cases in your projects where it could come in handy. And the most notable is just to have footage that's something you wouldn't be able to shoot on your own. So for example, I wanted to start my sequence out with like an underwater shot of some bubbles and then have the camera, you know, kind of imply that we're coming out of the water and seeing the waterfall. The issue there is that I don't have like an underwater housing for my camera. So I literally just wouldn't have been able to shoot that shot on my own. So I just went on Artgrid and found this clip, which fit in perfectly. I think collectively we're finding ourselves in this position way more frequently this year, just with there being so many more restrictions on where you can go to shoot, where you can travel to film a project. So you're finding yourself in that situation pretty frequently where you need a shot for a video, but can't go and get it yourself. And that's where stock footage can be extremely useful. But even when you do go out and shoot the entire project on location, you might run out of time to shoot the last few clips or just forget entirely. Or maybe you're halfway through editing the project and you have a really great idea, but you didn't get the footage that you would have needed for it on location. When I started editing that intro sequence, I thought it would be cool to have a sequence showing people hiking to the waterfall, but that's not something that I thought to film while I was on location. So I went on Artgrid, searched up some hiking clips, and then started narrowing down the search. I wanted to find kind of tighter close-up shots with a bit of handheld camera motion so you wouldn't have too much context of the location and see that it's not the same one where I shot my footage. So for example, with this clip that I found of someone kind of hiking through a grassy area, if we look at a wide version of that same sequence, we can tell it's very much not the same context that I want it to be seen in. On Artgrid, you're able to search for clips based not only on you know the keywords that you type in and those broader categories of footage, but also based on the type of shot, right? So you can narrow it down based on camera motion, like the time of day or location, the framing. So I was able to find close up shots shot outside with handheld camera motion to help find something that's a bit closer to my own footage. You can also narrow your search down based on the people seen in the footage. So I was able to find a drone shot of a waterfall with one person in the clip. And finally, you can just add additional keywords to the search. So when I needed footage of a car driving on a road in the mountains in the fog, I was able to look up car, fog, and mountains all together and find the exact footage 
I was looking for. So when you're looking for footage that's gonna blend really seamlessly into your own project, it's really important since you're sifting through so much footage here to really use those tags, use those keywords and narrow it down as much as you possibly can. I think that's the most common case where you would need to use stock footage, but you can also use it to transition between two sequences. So I had that waterfall sequence and then I had the rainy, foggy mountain road sequence. And I wanted a few kind of time lapses of storms rolling in to transition between them. So basically I just looked up keywords like mountains, storm, fog, and then sorted by speed to find time-lapse footage. To push that stormy moody vibe even harder, I used these lightning clips as overlays over a lot of my footage. And this is probably the most common way that I use stock footage is to overlay it over my own footage. Stock footage libraries like Artgrid are a perfect place to find these very simple, like almost just backgrounds or textures that you can overlay over your footage to give it a very interesting effect. So I just downloaded this clip of some lightning, slapped it over a bunch of clips in that sequence, set it to an add blend mode and turned it completely blue. And the effect adds a lot to that moody, stormy vibe. No matter what reason you're using stock footage in your project for, it's so important that you take some time to really blend it into your own footage. Make it look like it was shot at the same time. Make it look like it's a part of that sequence because let's face it, stock footage can stick out like a sore thumb if you don't take the time to blend it in with your own footage. Artgrid has a bunch of nifty tools and features to help you out with that. And I have plenty of tricks up my own sleeve to show you. So let's talk about a few techniques you can use to make stock footage look like your footage. One of my favorite things about Artgrid is that almost every clip on the site is a part of a sequence. You can scroll down and find, you know, 10, 20, maybe even a hundred other clips from that same shoot. That's an absolute lifesaver when you're editing because you're not going to have to meticulously color correct to make those shots look consistent. So for example, with these foggy drone shots and then the shots of the car driving on the mountain road, those are part of sequences, which is why those clips all blend together really well. So with these shots taken inside of the car, I'm not having to meticulously color grade and match like the skin tones together, match the lighting, because they're already shot using the same camera in the same lighting conditions with the same settings. As useful as those sequences are, in a lot of cases, you're still gonna end up having to match some clips from different cameras, different locations, different lighting conditions, but you can absolutely do that. I had to do a ton of that throughout the sequence that I made for this video, and I wanna show you some of the grading techniques that I used. So as I mentioned before on Artgrid, you have a lot of opportunities to download like log or even raw footage for most of the clips on the site, which is great because you get that super flat footage absolutely untouched and you have a lot of flexibility and control over the colors and the light. I started out by color correcting all of the footage using the exact same process, which helps to get it to a relatively similar starting point across the board. And this is basically the key to making all of these shots look consistent. It's not the grading, but the color correction that comes before it. Because we're pulling footage from different cameras in different locations, you're gonna have different exposures, different white balance throughout all those clips. If you can start out by just having a consistent black point, consistent white point, consistent exposure and white balance, throughout all those clips, you're already miles closer to having them look consistent throughout the sequence. Once you've done that, we can move on to color grading. And I wanted this entire sequence to be like very dark and moody, like most of the footage that I shot was. So I had to take a lot of footage that wasn't necessarily dark and moody to start with and make it look like it was. If we take a look at this drone clip that I filmed and then this stock clip that goes right after it, we have two very different greens in the image, right? Like one is a lot darker and colder and the other is much, you know, more light and yellowish. So to match that stock clip to my own footage, I started out by just darkening it and adding a lot of contrast and then adding a vignette to just overall make the clip look like it was shot in a much darker forest than it actually was. And then I matched the greens using the hue V saturation and hue V hue sliders to desaturate the greens and shift them a bit more towards blue than yellow. With that color grade, the clips play back way more seamlessly and the implication is a lot more believable 
that they were shot in the same area. I also needed to make this shot of a road look like it was shot in the same stormy conditions that the rest of the sequence are, even though it seems to be shot pretty much just during the middle of a cloudy day. So I used some pretty similar techniques to the last clip and basically just darkened the absolute hell out of the shot and then desaturated a lot of the colors, particularly the blues and the sky and reflected in the pavement. Later on in like the foggy road sequence, we have this clip and the problem with it is that the fog outside the window is way brighter than like the very dark moody fog in the other clips. So for this one, I basically just masked out the top half of the frame and then brought the highlights way down in terms of exposure to make it look similar to the other clips. That simple. Color correction and grading are definitely the most important parts of this process, but you can also just add similar animations and effects to stock footage that you would to your own footage. So for example, throughout that intro sequence, I used a lot of digital kind of zooms in. So a lot of clips I've digitally scaled in to create like a fake kind of push in on the subject. That's something I add to a lot of my own clips. So I added it to the stock footage as well. And having that consistent motion throughout the shots helps out quite a bit to making them look very uniform and very much like they're part of the same sequence. So those are a few techniques you can use to blend that stock footage into your own project. And overall, I think the way ArtGrid is approaching stock footage just makes it way easier to do something like this, right? To extensively use stock footage throughout a sequence and to really blend it into your own project very seamlessly. Just offering, you know, log and raw footage, having those sequences that most of the clips are a part of makes it way easier to make it look good. I absolutely recommend it. And if you want to check it out for yourself, I'll put an affiliate link in the description below. And if you sign up through that link, you'll actually get an additional two months on your subscription. Once again, if you want to see a bit more of a breakdown of the intro sequence to this video, that's on my IGTV, which I'll link in the description as well, where you can follow me. I also post, you know, all of my photography on Instagram and also just Instagram stories of what I'm out shooting and a bit of BTS behind my videos. All that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video, learned something new from it. And if you did, do feel free to share your support by leaving a like on the video, sharing it with your friends, or even subscribing to my channel. I upload new videos just like this every single week. But that's all for now. Keep creating and I'll see you in the next one.